So I was speaking to a young girl over this weekend, a little itty bitty thing, and she was giving me, telling me what one of her teachers had said. She goes to a Catholic school and her teacher, who has a, a religious sister, a nun, encouraged them saying, don't ever shoot for purgatory. Aim high for heaven. And it's a, a very basic thought that we all should have. But she said in her own little words, it's funny how the children of little mind think things through. She said, well, sister said we shouldn't aim for purgatory. We should aim for heaven. But it's too bad because it would be kind of fun to be a ghost for a little bit of time before going to heaven. Well, that's the story, but she got the point nonetheless. So aim high. And that's what we're all thinking about today, aiming high, because we were made for the heights of heaven. St. Thomas Aquinas, to give a, a theological statement, he says, it is that perfect good which completely fulfills the desire of the rational being. There's only a perfect good that can fulfill our desires. And he says later, only the uncreated and infinite good can satisfy fully the desire of a creature which conceives universal good. In other words, in the beautiful expression of St. Augustine, Lord, our hearts are restless until they rest in Thee. That is a one quotation worth contemplating over and over again. Our hearts are restless until they find God. It is impossible for man to find that true happiness in this world which he desires he can't find it in any natural or created good. Pleasures, riches, honor and glory, money, power and knowledge. All of these things satisfy us for a time. And then we find ourselves looking for something better, a higher good. Garrigou Lagrange says, Our will has a depth without measure, a depth which only God can fill. Now today, we honor those saints, both known and unknown. As I always like to remind you in this, on this feast day, we honor even the saints of your own families who are already in heaven. We honor the saints who are no longer deceived by limited happiness and by the goods of this world, they see at this moment, as we're doing what we're doing on earth, in heaven, they see God face to face. They possess him at this moment who alone can make us perfectly happy so that we have no need of anything else. They no longer are restless, and they are not restlessly seeking after any other joy for they possess God, who is infinite joy. And they say that in heaven, the joy is that of an eternal instant. Do you know the feeling when something really makes you happy? It could be a person, it could be a place, it could be some spectacular view in nature. Do you know that feeling of joy and happiness that overwhelms you when you first see that? that person or that thing. Well, it then, it's very intense, but then after a while it sort of dwindles away. Not so in heaven. It is an eternity of that first view of the person you love or that of that view that you love. That feeling that you get there, only intensified, lasts forever and ever and never dwindles down, never lessens. It's an eternal instant. God is, whatever you see in heaven, is always new. It's a beautiful thing to think of. That is what we aim for. 
But on this feast day too, we should meditate on the diversity and the variety of saints. We mustn't think that becoming a saint makes us all identical. That's not what God wants. Just as he doesn't want a flower garden to look all the same, you add variety to give beauty. And so it is in heaven among his saints. There are men and women who, while on earth, were of different nationalities and temperaments. You, believe it or not, have your weird saints. By that I mean some people, just by their own character, have weird personalities. Let's just face it. Some people are, but there's room for them in heaven. It doesn't matter. Then there are the gruff saints. Then there were those of gentle disposition. There are the contemplative souls and then the active. There are those who love to practice the virtue of justice, give everyone his due. And if they do wrong, put them in the slam. Then there are the saints of mercy, the saints who never once committed a mortal sin. And then there are the saints who only when they jumped off the bridge to commit suicide, before hitting the water, they had a, a moment to make an act of perfect contrition before they died and made it into heaven by the skin of their teeth. We had the Mary saints and the priestly saints and the missionary saints and the hermit saints. It is filled with all of this, this variety in heaven. It's a truly beautiful thing, but a thought that also should give us hope because we can be quite weird and cantankerous at times, I'm sure. But when we think of sanctity, we think, well, I must be like this saint because I like St. Therese or I love St. Augustine or whatever saint it might be. The the automatic response or thought is, well, then I must be just like him to get to heaven. Not so. You were created to be Saint so-and-so. You were not made to be Saint Augustine. There is already a Saint Augustine. We don't need another. We need a Saint Father Maguire, Saint Father McKenna. Imagine that one. But in any case, He'll get his shots in later, I'm sure. But there's a saint that we're, we're all created by God to be, and we're to be no other saint. So what is it that we're to do to become a saint? It is really quite simple. We all, we humans have a way of making things complicated. It's simple. And here's where the saints all come together. That variety of saints comes together is A, they loved God. B, they did everything that they did out of love for God. They fulfilled the duties of their state. And I would say that circumstances will dictate what kind of saint God wants you to be. If he wanted you to be a Saint Augustine, he would have created you in the 300s. But he wants you as a different saint, created in the 2000s, among all of the apostasy of Vatican II and everything else. But here's really what you need to do to become a saint. The first is the duties of your state in life. That's tough. Women, do your chores in the house. Take care of the children. Be the heart of the home because that is what God created you to be. Men, don't, don't slack on your jobs either. Go out and work hard and support the family. That is your duty. And the priests too, they have duties of their own. But there's a maxim I want to say, to tell you about in the spiritual life. Do well whatever you do. That is, do what you're supposed to do at this instant. The duty of the present moment. 
That, to me, is always a very consoling thing. There's no need to worry about the future. There's no need to worry about the past. God only wants from you the present. What are you doing now? Well, you are hearing Mass. Think of nothing else. Do perfectly, and for love of God, pray the Mass perfectly for love of God, and you are sanctifying yourself and winning a high degree in heaven. Think of that, the duty of the present moment. And then always there is the fighting of self, which means not only finding and overcoming your own predominant fault, the fault that influences the way you think and speak and act, but also of knowing that inclination to virtue that you have by nature. Each of us has a fault, and each of us has a good quality that we are to develop, to develop into a virtue. Think about it. Work on it hard. And those are the things that will, will sanctify you. Again, to go over those few points, the duties of your state, the duty of the here and now, and then the fighting of yourself, forming yourself into a saint. But whatever you do, to conclude with this sermon, remember that all the saints who are now in heaven were once just like us, with all of their weaknesses, with all of their temptations, with all of their problems and anxieties and, and illnesses and all of the rest of it. But they're in heaven now, and they are our intercessors. Go to them. Pray for them each day to teach you how to imitate them, to teach you what God wants of you, and to always <clears throat> try not to be a ghost, but seek for heaven. Don't aim for purgatory. Aim high for the kingdom of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.